Hello everybody, my name's Laurie Kirk and I'm from APMG in Canberra, Australia. And today I'd like to introduce Stacey Barr from Stacey Barr Proprietary Limited. Uh, how are you, Stacey? I'm super well, thanks Laurie. Great, and uh, today we're talking on this Midday Mentors series. For those who may have been the first Midday Mentors uh, program that you've uh, lo downloaded, this has been something that APMG has started since the pandemic and allows people 15 or 20 minutes just to, to listen to some other things that are happening in our industry and uh, organisational performance measurement certainly um, been a great great topic to talk about and uh, really pleased to have uh, you with you today. Now, Stacey, you're, uh, you live in northwest Brisbane, is that correct? Are you in Brisbane? Yeah. Or just out uh, of actually just out of Brisbane. I'm fortunate enough to live in a rural, rural residential place. So my, uh, my home is where my office is and I'm surrounded by trees and birds and nature, That's which it. is a great place to think and work. Great place to think and a great place to work. And certainly, as you can see from the background, again, people who are doing this regularly and get to know my office, but we're still working from home. But working from home for you is something that you've done for a number of years. Isn't that correct, um, Stacey? Uh, approximately 20 years, yes. 20 years. So <laughs> that's interesting. We'll come to that in a moment about COVID and relevance. But I'd like to, people who have uh, downloaded this are totally interested in organisational performance uh, measurement and the words pump. Um, so tell us about pump, Tracy. That's a, a process that you've developed. It is, Laurie. It's a deliberate methodology for selecting and implementing and using performance measures to get performance to improve fundamentally. Um, it, uh, it kind of evolved really from my own practice when I worked in an organisation and was responsible for how the organisation measured performance, there were some struggles that I had and over time I learned that just about every other manager or, or performance officer or anybody trying to achieve a goal uh, shared, they had the same struggles. Mm -hmm. And the more I looked into it, the more I could see that the same practices were behind those struggles and I, I came to call them bad KPI habits. Uh, we often need to change those words KPI and performance measure. Yes. yes. Bad habits like using measures to judge people that never goes well, uh, yes. trying to measure goals that are really vague um, or just brainstorming measures and ending up with measures that were really lame. So struggling as I did uh, and coming to understand what the bad habits were, I, I, I tried to come up with practices that could replace those bad habits. Wow ended up calling it pump and it's a now it's evolved into a, a process a series of how-to techniques that mean that we don't have to do those bad habits anymore and also mean that those struggles that we have with with measuring performance go away so what so, does it stand for there we are well there we go <laughs> people will be question. asking that though you know we've got to come to the, the we shouldn't leave it till the end so it's a uh, because it was about performance measurement and because I was wanting people to understand that it's a process, not just a, a, an event we do in a half day workshop, mm -hmm. I called it the performance measurement process and that's not very catchy and it's not very interesting and it's quite a mouthful. Uh, a friend um, and colleague at the time just nicknamed it pump. Uh, yep. She put the U in there and I said, well, why the U? You know, why wouldn't you put another vowel in there? And, and she yeah. said, well, because good performance measurements up to you. You have to change your practices yes. and do what works to make it work. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good because it creates that interest and it's got the connection still with performance. Um, so tell me about where you are now and uh, how many, when did you, you obviously saw a need in the industry, you saw that existing performance indicators were either being misused or not used properly. Um, so you started Pump. How many years ago was that? Uh, well, Pump was born probably 24, 25 years ago and I was still working in this organisation at the time. Mm. I. I knew I was never destined to a desk job, that I would have to be a, like an entrepreneur, I guess, of some kind, but to be able to work for myself. And I, I took my ideas about Pump with me uh, when I left and started consulting with some trepidation, I might add, because I wasn't really sure at that stage that I had the answer or that I had the answer to everybody's question. Mm. Uh, and the more clients I had, the, the more I did come to realise that everyone did have 
very similar, if not the yeah. same struggles with measuring performance. Um, so over a few years, I, I tested and, and found that Pump worked for everyone and I no longer needed to create a bespoke approach for each client that I had. Pump just worked. Yeah. Um, came to trust it enough that I made it 100% my focus and that was probably around 2005 I think where I really I hit that tipping point of going pump works pump is what I'm giving all of my my energy to now um, so from then on I um, I share I, and still do share a lot of free educational information just to help people see if they resonate with my ideas about performance measurement because some of them are quite different to mainstream Mm -hmm. And then they can decide uh, if they like it and they'll come learn pump. And as it turned out, it's spread enough around the world that I couldn't keep up with the travel to deliver workshops and training. Um, so I'm very fortunate now that a, that a few of pump's fans stood up and said, let me help. And now I have a few uh, wonderful uh, colleagues who I've licensed um, around the world now to deliver yeah. pump for me. So I can stay in my home office more. You can stay in your beautiful home office. What a great story of something where you saw and it's a great inspiration for people who may be looking at it and struggling in the workplace or looking at change that had that conviction 20 years ago of seeing something that in your in your working for that place, taking that idea, but those first two or three clients, you're obviously thinking, you know, am I, you know, am I just, am I really right in what I'm doing? But yeah. having that strength of conviction and that you know that what you were proposing was correct. Um, it's a great story, it really is. So Thank let you. me let me tell how many where you licensed. Um, so you're licensing people now. Whereabouts uh, do the people licensing to deliver this this approach? I have uh, the lovely Louise, who's in Canada and North. She she handles um, North America. I have mm -hmm. another uh, another licensee, Brooke, who's in the USA, and he collaborates mm -hmm. with Louise. I've got Paul in the UK. He handles Europe as well. Uh, but I also have another in, in Europe, in Turkey, um, Aicha, she's she's wonderful as well. She's the newest member of our team. And I have uh, Peter who is in Kenya and he takes care of all our African clients. And Mark who is my colleague here in Australia and Mark and I have been collaborating for 15 years now mm. and he knows Pump aside from me, better than anyone else on the planet. So he does all of our uh, Asia Pacific Australasian delivery and again, lets me spend more time in my Excellent. home office. <laughs> now those people, that's another thing that if someone's out there doing a course and you see something that you like, just in pump at any of the courses that are out there, you know, don't be, most of these people had uh, work course participants, were they, Stacey? They've come through. Oh yeah, they yeah. have, yes. So, so if you feel you really like it, um, you know, put your hand up and say, you know, how can I become a trainer? Um, how can I become a licensee? Um, so when that, so those people, so the connection with APMG is uh, we've had our connection for what about two, 18 months now, I think. Something. I think it's at least 18 months now, yes. Laurie, yeah. Time yeah. goes quickly. I, I've lost track of, I've gone COVID time. People would say COVID time and that's, <laughs> I've lost track of days or months. Um, so what's our, uh, tell the people what our relationship is. Our, uh, well, our relationship is uh, really and an, an a very important one to me. I wanted uh, Pump to be recognised uh, as, as some, recognised independently as something that really worked and something that was worth learning. And I did actually have it um, uh, certified through uh, a, an educational institute in the United States originally, but because Pump's clients are all around the world, and because I wanted to 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 really test, you know, is a is a a worldwide um, reputable organisation like APMG, uh, mm -hmm. if they will look at Pump, and you guys thoroughly did as well. I was really impressed with the process to for you to decide whether you wanted to to certify Pump or not. That just gives everybody uh, the confidence that that they don't have to second guess that Pump works and that it's worthwhile because. Uh, such a great organisation like APMG is is backing it and behind it, and you totally have been backing it and been behind it. And we have um, people every week coming through and and doing the certification exam with APMG and and earning their certification and sharing their digital pump digital certified badge, badge, badge on, on well, LinkedIn right, and so on. And, and people are really proud of that. That's something that's really taken off. Um, and also the process of you had a, a bank of exam questions, but it was also a good chance for you to review those because we really made sure that it was you. You were looking at the syllabus that you had yeah. and identified some areas that yeah. were probably strengths and weaknesses. So I think there's another lesson that we learned that um, that approach that we have 
can help you even improve the examination that you offer. Um, that's that's you know I remember going through oh, that. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I I think to be fair, the syllabus for pump had been in my head up until the point that that we started looking more closely at it and creating the syllabus was exactly like you say. It was an opportunity to review not just the exam questions, but to mm. review the content and make sure I had put. Mm enough material into the actual training course as well to um yeah. to, to you know uphold that rigor so yeah it was it was a, a really thorough and worthwhile process for sure well it, it was also a joy to hear someone who was also keen on a syllabus i say that i think a syllabus is great and they they look at me and they roll their eyes and say we well, lives in canberra he used to drive a volvo and he likes so <laughs> uh, you know syllabi so but seriously a good syllabus is exactly what if it's written yeah. well you know, you as a buyer, you should actually ask for the syllabus because it's what's what am I going to be taught? Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like if I'm going to spend money and resources and time going into a course, I would like to know what I'm buying and what what's the expected outcome. So I think we struck a chord, didn't we, about performance and, and syllabus and, uh, and work from there. So uh, sure. my, my other message to take home for anyone listening is don't be frightened to ask for the syllabus of a course um, because you know, you should have a look at what you're going to be taught uh, or want to share. Um, Indeed. So now coming to this um, interesting period, I refuse to say the new normal. I'm not going to say that anymore, but it's a change. How is um, performance management, organisational performance management in this era of, era of COVID? Uh, 20, 2020, the year that continues to give. Um, <laughs> in all the ways we didn't expect. <laughs> I know, it continues to give. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really expected performance measurement to be put on the back burner by a lot of organisations. I thought they would be going uh, back to what they thought the basics were and getting into survival mode uh, and trimming and, and really culling back on a lot of their expenditure. And I was a bit wrong uh, because I think a lot of them started seeing that their strategic priorities were changing because you know good performance measurement starts with a good strategy why, why bother measure anything unless you really care to know how well you're doing it um, and how well you, you're doing it matters when the result is a really important one so the results or goals that organizations have have shifted because their business environment has shifted COVID or something else um, so some of them, yes, have shifted into survival mode. Uh, many of them, however, have shifted into waste reduction, streamlining, um, putting more focus on the physical and, and mental health of their employees and engagement of employees, given all this working from home that's happening. Uh, they've also changed the priority maybe, or maybe it's more the style of how they are building their or nurturing their relationships with clients. Um, it's been less about trying to do business to keep making money. It's been more about doing business in a way that's sympathetic, empathetic to our client situation and and helping them however we can and keeping the relationship going rather than trying to keep the revenue flowing. So this shift in strategic priority has meant that people are wanting to shift what they're measuring. Now the advantage of measuring is that you know things much sooner through looking at data rather than sitting around a table and talking about hearsay and opinion and gut feel and what you spoke to Bob about last Tuesday. Measures give you that exact quick information and when we do it well, what it means is that those new shifting strategic priorities in a rather urgent uh, changing business environment, um, we, we can know a lot sooner and a lot quicker uh, with those measures. The other impact I think that COVID is having on everything, not just measurement, is that we have to do less uh, and have a sharper focus on things. And when we do that, we really can afford to do it properly. So measuring less, but doing the measuring properly means that we end up with a better outcome all around. So not quite what I expected the impact COVID would have on, on yeah. my work, but, uh, but one that I'm very happy for anyway. So interesting with your other uh, uh, licensees or people who are delivering your course in other countries, have they seen uh, a difference in, you know, in people wanting to be trained or, or repeat business coming back for consulting? Has there been a, what's happened there? They've all kept flowing. Uh, they were all, they're all uh, very good 
uh, business people and they're very good trainers, excellent trainers and excellent facilitators. So they were able to very quickly adapt to that online delivery. They've all done it in different ways, which is I found absolutely intriguing. Um, we, as a team, we do learn from each other that that's just what happens when you have great relationships with your colleagues. But uh, I've I've just been humbled by by what they've gone ahead and done and implemented and then shared back with the rest of us about different different ways to deliver successfully online, but not not generically, very specifically to the pump content. So when you come to teaching pump step four, try this app because it's really great for online engagement. You know, it's that kind of collaboration has been good. Oops. So we've all taken a revenue hit. There's no doubt about that. But what we have done is been able to focus much more on different delivery modes and also tailoring the way we deliver to suit each of our clients different situations. Some for example if they're working from home and they've got kids at home they can't sit on a, on a Zoom meeting all day long. Yes. They have to do it in smaller chunks so yeah. we've figured out options to handle that. Then others that just needed to just get in and get it done and so we've worked out how to make an all day Zoom meeting yeah. <laughs> more engaging and, and energizing than we ever thought possible. So so yeah it's uh, it's been it's been yeah. so interesting watching how they've managed it. I, I, I see that. I see that in our training as well. Like your your training would have been what percentage before this uh, classroom and online? What would have been the the rough rough mix? Would you say before COVID it was ninety five percent in wow. person, five percent online? Oh, maybe I'm maybe wow. it's sort of a little more like ninety percent in person, ten percent yeah. online. Uh, but I've been doing online delivery not just for the pump training, but I, I, I often do free webcasts and uh, yes. and things like that. So I've always done some form of online delivery and I've been very comfortable with it. So it wasn't a shock, I think, for us to to do this shift. But of course, now 100% of our delivery is online. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you, Laurie, and, and what you're learning from your colleagues, but I'm, I'm thinking that we'll you know, if, if before it was like 90-10, I'm expecting that we, we could be 50-50 after COVID with our yes. in-person versus online delivery. Look, and we are seeing that and we're seeing a, an interesting dynamic emerging that people are keen to get back to the classroom. But I think you'll find that there'll be going back to the classroom will be on the client's side because the client will say, I can take responsibility and reduce the risk. I can put the, you know, nothing against the, the classroom provided by a training provider. Absolutely nothing. They all, they're doing wonderful guidances, mm. etc. But from an organisational point of view, I am seeing already an increase in in-house courses um, that people are doing. Um, and then what we'll see is we may not see the uh, the standard three-day course or four-day course. We may see one day where you come in uh, when everyone's in the office and we'll do a half day introduction session and then we'll see the blended delivery, the medium will change that we might do days two or three remotely and then get together in a week or two time to finish it. I can see that uh, model emerging. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it, so, it, that's been the fun thing though, hasn't it? That it, it, it it's unfolding. It, I don't think we could have predicted it really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and look, I was thinking of when you said 20 years ago starting, you know, we were all very worried about the, you know, the, the what was going to happen to our computers in, in the year 2000 and uh, <laughs> we survived that. But it was it was a point of change. And I think we'll, we'll look back on some of these things as a point of change, particularly. And I'm heartened to see that organisations are looking at performance measurement now more than ever. So I think it's uh, uh, it'll be another I can see sort of a if we have to map this out in your memoirs, I'd like to read those in a few years' time. We'll probably see that this was the the COVID chapter uh, that we could have. So. Yeah, yeah, tipping point for for a few things, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so what are some of the ways that this can help individuals and organisations? You know, so we've got people that are under a lot of stress at the moment, um, mm. in individually and organisation. How can Pump help uh, people? I think probably one of the important ways that that Pump can help people is, and this is because of Pump's focus on getting right to the core of what matters most, and that's to develop a, a shared purpose. Uh, in times like this, a shared purpose is really important. It's coming back to um, the thing that, that matters to all of us. Uh, for example, uh, a social justice uh, organisation, not profit, not for profit organisation, uh, contacted me um, some time ago and just 
I didn't even know this person. She'd she'd been one of the people that learned pump online on our self-paced program. So I, I don't meet those people. Mm -hmm. uh, they just get in there and, and, and look after themselves. Um, and she just wrote to me and she said, look, I, I need you to know this about about pump that I what I do is I represent and I'm an activist for people of color uh, in our community and I am trying to get the police and the community to see that they have a shared goal and to focus on that. So instead of constantly, you know, having that divisive kind of energy and tension between them, she got them into the same physical room pre-COVID mm -hmm. and facilitated them through a couple of the pump techniques, which is about what is the result that we're really trying to achieve and how would we all be convinced that result was being achieved? What is the evidence? What is the performance measure that would um, that would would be something that we'd all get behind? And she said it was the first collaborative conversation that they'd ever had. So I think that shared purpose is vitally important. And if if she can do it in such a very heated situation, mm -hmm. I think we can all do it within our organisations. I just might hold it. So specifically what she got from Pump is, is how to develop a shared purpose and how to, to get those, what would people potentially from perceived different points mm -hmm. of view, how mm -hmm. to bring them together to something that's real and measurable. Is that Yeah, what, that's, that's it. Good? That's it. Okay. And I, I think the, the piece of Pump that does that, Laurie, is that it, it doesn't force us. It really encourages us to use everyday clear language rather than all the weaselly vague words that we typically write our goals with. Uh, yeah. So enhanced community outcomes is probably where they started or mm -hmm. enhanced community outcomes for people of colour is probably where they started, but that doesn't mean much to anybody. So they would have unpacked that and they would have said enhanced how, what kinds of outcomes? Mm -hmm. Let's be specific. Let's describe it in, in language that we, you know, we could recognize happening around us in the real world and when you do that people really can quickly converge on what matters most and then they can realize they really are going for the same thing yeah, and then of course that makes measuring easier too if you can what i call the barbecue test can you talk about it at a barbecue with a friend what yeah. are you doing and that's the barbecue you don't want to have you know unless you're in canberra where yeah maybe people might talk you know a little bit like that but but in those circles yeah, no, yeah. Can, my friends in Canberra. But that's the environment that you're working. If you're working with an environment and you are having a barbecue, you know, what do you do? That's the kind of language we need to get down to, don't we? We need to make it understand. People understand that, oh, yeah, we're measuring this and it's going to be this. That's uh, it. Uh, Great. That's a great analogy. I love that. I have to use barbecue. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the barbecue language. Better than, uh, uh, the politicians use the pub test, but I prefer to use a barbecue because we probably have more barbecues than visits to the pub, I think. I'd so, say yeah. so, yeah. More people feel comfortable at barbecues too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so, Tashi, where, so organisations, I cut you off with individuals. Any, uh, you've seen a similar thing with organisations that have taken this on, um, taken this approach on? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there are probably a couple. Um, on the because waste reduction is becoming one of these big um, important things about COVID is we just haven't got the resources to to slather around uh, willy nilly. We we really have to be careful how we we spend our resources and look at the return we get from them. In the aviation sector, um, a, an organisation used pump to to focus on on waste, and one of their processes was a training process, and they they realised that people who failed the training could not be uh, given the job of flight controller. Um, I'm pretty sure none of us wants to be in a plane where the flight controller in the tower has failed their training. <laughs> so it's very important that these people are not put mm. in the towers, but are given jobs that are better suited to their, mm. to their skills. But these poor people, once they failed, they were sitting in facilities for months and months and months doing nothing until they were reallocated. And the, the team just measured that and they they used the rest of the pump process to identify why that was happening and what they could do about it and recommended solutions to managers. And in the first seven months, I think it was, saved half a million dollars. And that's an ongoing saving because mm -hmm. they're not having to wear that cost year on year. So it's a it's a nice, simple, targeted way to get a really big um, impact with just one measure, really. Mm. 
So that's um. So it's not it's not just taking something coarse metric of widgets sold, you know, equals that. It's actually does look a little bit more holistically at other things or other things that can contribute to the bottom line. It may not just mm. be the widgets sold. If we can oh. reduce our overheads, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, nearly like uh, my colleague uh, in OE Partners doing the Lean Six Sigma. It's a very there's a there's a very much in a uh, a relationship there, isn't there between. That, uh, oh, there absolutely is. I mean, we've used Pump with Lean Six Sigma in the past to help yeah, teams yeah. almost using the performance measures as the lens through which they design and implement and evaluate their Six Sigma projects. Yes, yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Um, we're nearly out of time, but we're finishing our time. It's always had a good chat, but I know people are sort of having their midday mental, mid midday sort of walk around the block. Where to from here? Where to from Pump? Where do you? If, we, if I get you back in, say, two years' time, I'm going to talk to you before two years, but in two Thank years' time, we reschedule this. Um, what's it going to look like in two years? Where, where do you think you'll be? I, what I'd really like to do is, is get myself more detached from the delivery of Pump. Uh, I mean, I've got, as I've mentioned, brilliant licensees who have, you know, they've tested and found that they can deliver pump online in lots of different ways It all work well. Yeah. So they've got many more choices uh, to work with within the limitations that things like COVID have, but also uh, preferences that our clients might have this from this point going forward. So I, what I really want to do is to, is to get the information about pump out there to people. So, they can appreciate that measurement doesn't have to be the struggle that it always seems to be that there is a practical and engaging way to get beyond it and you know, I, I i like in my strategic plan for my business right at the very center is that far more organizations throughout the world reach the goals that really matter to them, mm. but not just reach them, reach them sooner and with less effort than they otherwise would, because that's what I believe performance measurement's really about. And the feedback we keep getting, the research I keep doing says that there really isn't anything that is out there that's de as deliberate as Pump is for that kind of job. So that that's, Laurie, in two years mm. time, I want to tell you that, um, that we've got a tenfold increase in the people around the world who are aware of Pump. Excellent. Can I ask, uh, what would be the youngest person that you've had on a Pump course? Oh, you're a tricky question. Well, no, tricky question, sorry. Uh, but I just think well, the reason I want to let you think about that is I was looking at this and I was thinking, is this, wouldn't it be nice to have a, 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 a youth Pump uh, uh, derivative? Because wouldn't it be nice to actually help people going when they're leaving year 12 or you know where they're questioning that they, they, we already see problems in Australia about now getting into university unemployment setting realistic goals setting realistic performance indicators and is there is it too early to learn about organizational measurement I don't think it is um, no I, I know a few of my colleagues have taught uh, university courses um, in business management and have found that the the information about performance measurement is is either lacking or it, it's just not right, and it's it's sending people down the wrong uh, the wrong path with it. And some of them have started incorporating some of the pump ideas in their lectures. At, mm. Like that's very minor, but I I think mm. I'm agreeing with you, Laurie, that mm. if we're going to leave high school and learn about how to work in organisations, how to lead organisations, measurement, the right kind of measurement, is one of the most transformational tools that we can have. It, it can it can change a culture. Mm. It can uh, accelerate uh, a, a journey toward a, a, a vision. It can demonstrate to everybody um, how well we're fulfilling our mission. You know, it, it's a vitally important yeah. tool. So, yeah, and I'm with the, you. The final point there, I think, is also very confronting with someone who's left year 12 uh, and left even an undergraduate who's doing holidays and they do, a, a, or even leaving university. The very first job they do, they get, the, you know, your professional development plan and they roll out the KPIs, your key performance indicators. It's a different language. And I'd like to think that we could help those younger people or people coming through that um, understand what that culture is. Doesn't, you know, so even when someone whacks a KP, the word KPI, 
they understand what that may mean. So maybe I think that's a, an area that I might sort of work with you on the next two years. So. I look forward to chatting about it. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, who is a, uh, who's listened to this particular podcast, um, the details of PUMP uh, are certainly on the links that we're having here as well. Uh, details are also on the APMG website and uh, certainly on Stacey's uh, website. Uh, what's your website there, Stacey? It's uh, pretty easy, stacybard.com. <laughs> That's bar with two R's, is that correct? It is, and Stacey uh, with an E-Y. <laughs> Stacey with an E-Y and bars with two R's. Look, and I think you'll go on there. There's a wealth of information and uh, thank you very much for your time today, Stacey. Always a pleasure chatting with you, Laurie. Thank you.